thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here and hear your comments. Um, so there are two motivations uh, that I'm struggling with uh, that I would love to, to hear uh, which one um, I should continue with. Uh, so basically, you know, the first motivation is very policy grounded. So there are uh, recognition for performance throughout uh, our lives. Um, now, despite of hard work, uh, it's often the case that individual accomplishments go unlabeled or unrecognized. For example, individual fail a grade, fail to be promoted, fail uh, in a hiring process. Uh, and we know quite well that this has consequences for the accomplished individual. Okay, we don't know much about the consequence to the peers who witness uh, the success or this labeling uh, effect. Um, several ideas predict that a person's success will spill over to his peers. Uh, these ideas operate through either, uh, you know, social learning or uh, through the preference uh, of the individuals. But yet, uh, we don't know, there is very little empirical evidence of, of such spillovers. So when, when, yeah. when a labeling, I, I would think like failing, failing a grade especially is like an uh, active, it's like a bad stigmatizing mark. But would you, would you call that failing? So are you interested in labeling a positive label or, or uh, absence of a positive label? Or a negative it, though label? it could be, uh, so in my setting, it's a positive labeling. Yeah, it's a positive. So you would imagine that you actually, you pass the grade. So that they think about the pass, passing the grade, yeah. Um, okay, so that's the first. The second motivation is actually what got me uh, started in this project, which is, you know, there is, you know, a fact that demand for education among low socioeconomic status students remain low. Um, there are, of course, several reasons of why they, that's the case. But one reason that people uh, had started to, to study and, and get interested in is the subjective elements of the demand, such as perceptions about the returns to education, lack of interest in education, that explains at least in part uh, this low demand. Now, there is a growing literature trying to address this issue, like going to the field and providing more accurate information to students uh, about the, the returns to education, for example. But what people uh, haven't done so much is to try to understand why that low demand is there in the first place. Uh, before starting addressing uh, the, uh, you know, giving more accurate information, uh, what type of experiences in the student's life actually affect, uh, generate this low demand in the first place? And that's where uh, my paper uh, will fit. Um, so, in practice, I will ask the question, how does the recognition of a student's accomplishment impact his peers' uh, educational investment? Uh, so, to be precise on what, what, uh, what are the challenges in actually answering uh, this question? So, first, uh, I was, I'm interested in the recognition element of someone who is very accomplished. So there is an accomplished student. I'm just trying to understand how on top of that accomplishment, how recognition affect has some consequences. So I really need two equally accomplished students where one gets recognized and the other doesn't get recognized, right? The second issue is that in order to recover the full, uh, the full consequence of recognizing someone, you really need that the non-recognized individual doesn't get any of the prestige or the salience that comes out of that accomplishment. Um, and the third issue is that I'm interested in documenting the effect on the peers. Therefore, I really need that the peers uh, are defined before the recognition, because the recognition may change the, the set of people that interact and so on. So my research design is addressing these uh, three elements. So I'm implementing a regression discontinuity design comparing 170 class, 70,000 classrooms, uh, where the classroom here is basically determining the set of peers that I'm, I will be studying. Uh, and what is particular uh, uh, on this classroom is that there is a student who scored close to the award threshold in the math Olympiad in Brazil. So then we'll be comparing two types of classrooms. So the first classroom that I'm calling treatment cl classroom, uh, there is a student who scored close and won the award. In the second classroom, there is a student who scored close and lost the award. And it turns out that in this setting, 
and they don't disclose uh, to that student uh, neither the rank or any information about his accomplishment, okay? So that's basically the two, the simple comparison uh, that I will make uh, throughout the talk, yeah? But can I think this second is a second treatment? It's like, you know, I didn't win, so somehow I infer that I'm not that good relative to a potential control group which I do with our observe. Which is full. Yeah. So the way I think is that the recognition, there will always be this salience element of the recognition that is operating through information, right? Uh, so I think I would prefer to keep, to be on this side of the story where I can actually fully control any element that is coming from through information, right? Because what you're saying is that you, I could study one case where there is full information and it's just that you lost or not. Yeah. That's what you're saying. And I'm saying it's like, even in that case, there is a lot that is coming from information because the award itself is delivering information because of salience and, and so on. So uh, because of that, I think it's better to, to isolate the impact of recognition uh, by having this control group that doesn't get any of the accomplishment. But yeah, but this is a feature, I, but I agree that there are these two components that basically uh, could be separated empirically, yeah. Seems, I don't want to be a pain, but it, yeah, seems yeah. Like, it seems like it's an, a kind of an assumption here, you make, which is fine, perhaps. Uh -huh. Like, it could be thought as a second reason, yeah, that is, you tried, you didn't make it, yeah. and, so, and so now they affect your recognition on the other way. You try, you didn't make it. And so people know that you fail. I, I think that question is, who participates in these, in these qualifying rounds? Does everybody have a, like, do, 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 just by virtue of taking classrooms exams and not participating in the Olympics? No. Or do you have to? Well, like, the, I will enter much more into the detail of it, but like the top 5% will actually participate in the math Olympiad. Uh, I think especially, do yeah. the peers know in the control classroom that that person tried and failed? Uh, not necessarily, it, no. That's your question, right? Because yeah. if, 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 you know, if they don't know that the person tried failed, then, then it's closer to the control group you have in mind, right? Unless they were taking the exam too. Yes, also exactly, yes. So the question is what you're saying is that there is some learning uh, in terms of the actually participating at all? Or like think, when you win? I think your point is, you know, it's a treatment where someone tried and failed. Yeah. That could be seen as a treatment, right? But if you don't know, if you only observe in case a person wins, then then that, that's not a problem, right? I guess. But so you, you claim you're saying that the person doesn't know. The peers don't know if No, the they could win. Them. They could know. They could know. Um, but I'm just trying to understand what is the issue exactly. So um, I, I, I think maybe you shouldn't have said this thing about it's important that they get no spillover. Like there's yeah. some, there's some baseline that's kind of what happens when you there's the rec there's like the recognition and then not that. And you want to get the diff. It's it's not so important that the not that be like nothing, a pure nothing in some sense. Mm. It's, it's whatever there is when it's not that. Mm -hmm. It's whatever identifying there is. the marginal effect. Yeah, but it is like uh, the not that implies that you don't know how good you are. So you know, right. So what I'm saying is that the recognition is allowing you to learn something about yourself. Uh, that, and that's what I'm trying to, to say that that would be important to, to be not that here. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're that how, do, I know I got asked to take the exam, yeah. so I'm in the top 5%. Mm -hmm. That's different than if I was not asked to take mm -hmm. the exam, in which case I know I'm in the 95%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it, it is kind of a two-level treatment. One is. Yeah, asked. there are several treatments yeah. before. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. exploring the marginal treatment of yeah. this last mile, which is like you got the award or, or did not get an award, and you don't know that you are, you know, very close to, to, to win. To win, yeah. yeah. But I think exactly. the issue is whether there is a positive treatment effect or whether the control group is actually a negative treatment effect. Mm -hmm. So when absolutely no, no, there, there could be, yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be, is mm -hmm. it due because of a positive treatment effect on one group, negative, or a combination of the two effects? So I think this was a, 
uh, yes, I don't think I can answer that question empirically. So I will just say that there is a net effect uh, mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So I just clarification, mm -hmm. and, and and the student who won does not know that they were just right above. They just it's just they just know that they won, right? They don't know if they're just. They know. Barely. They know where they are. Yeah. I know that they barely won. Yes. I see. They okay. know. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So I don't think it's done in like the national merit, right? You're just told you're in. Yes. Yeah, so here you know the rank, yeah. okay. if you so, win, right? If you win, although, you know. I guess actually with like PSAT, you, you are also given your percentile, but I think it stops at 99, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. You, and your dream, pure, your dream pure control would be kids who took the test, whose tests were exogenously shredded by accident right after they took them, and so they couldn't be graded and they were told that, and there's no information. Like, everybody... No, there is information to the central authority, it's just that due to logistically reasons, they don't give this information yeah, what back. I'm, what I'm saying is the dream pure control would be ah, like I that see, I, could, yeah. I could not infer anything at all to my yes. performance, even though I did it and everything, but then it just got destroyed and it was, couldn't be graded. Mm -hmm. That would be like, that yeah. would be the pure control they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're looking at Brazil, there might be cases. <laughs> there might be cases. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Um, or actually, the, the score was randomly assigned. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, you had a question? Is that tracking of these questions? Tracking, yeah. So empirically, I will check that. There is <laughs> tracking, could be, there could exist tracking. Uh, but why you were asking about that? Yeah. There's a difference between treatment and control classrooms? No, so Marge, so basically, I will enter more into the detail, but basically the classroom is defined uh, ex ante before the award. And then I'm tracking whoever are the classmates later on, no matter if there is tracking or not. Yeah. Okay, so the main findings based on this empirical strategy, uh, you know, the, the main findings are divided in two set of findings. So the first finding is that First, I showed that the award increases classmates' educational investments measured by participation margins and, and test scores. Um, and I showed that this impact is one fourth of the impact on the accomplished student himself. Now, the second set of results, uh, I'm presenting suggestive evidence on the mechanism. Uh, however, I cannot really nail what is the mechanism that is driving uh, this, this result. What I can show is that the increase in classmates' investment occurs for peers that are close to the accomplished student in terms of ability and physically close. And, and throughout the talk, I will argue that this is consistent with a demand uh, effect where students are uh, perhaps changing their perceptions about themselves, perhaps changing their preference uh, towards education, uh, which I, I denominate basically uh, changing the mindset of the student to be a high achieving uh, mindset. Uh, clarification? Yeah. So is this award perceived by all students as something universally desirable or does it just put you into the nerd box that actually some students might be ashamed they got the award? So, so this is uh, empirical basically uh, finding, right? It could have uh, negative consequences. What I find is that there are positive consequences, but yeah. Um, okay. Good, so um, that's just the outline of the talk. Uh, it should be all dark, uh, but basically in the institutional context, I will tell much more about the classroom and how exactly I'm thinking that this award is affecting the peers. Uh, the data empirical strategy, the results, uh, I will discuss primarily the main result, which is like what is the consequence of the award on educational investments of the peers. Then on the mechanism, I will discuss what I think is going on, which is like changing this high performance mindset, increasing the demand for education. Alternative channels, I will talk much more about the supply of education. And then I will conclude where I will bring back the literature discuss Leo's paper and some other papers that are very related to that and hopefully say where is exactly my contribution. Uh, okay, institutional council. So the Brazil Math Olympiad in public schools, that's a very large annual competition tar targeting all public schools students in Brazil. This represents about 89% of the universe of public schools uh, uh, participating in this Math Olympiad. So, it's a big deal, it's advertised in, in most uh, popular TV channels, uh, and uh, perhaps it's different than uh, 
many people will be familiar with the math olympiad itself there is not a very extremely selective group of people this is basically trying to motivate students in public schools okay uh, is organized in two phases. So the first phase, uh, 18 million students participate and happens at the school. And they just take an exam and, and this uh, uh, allows them to learn if they are on the top 5% within their school, they pass to the second phase. In the second phase, uh, which is actually what is driving my variation, I'm just uh, exploring the results of, of the second phase, um, the top 33,000 students are publicly uh, recognized, okay? Um, yeah, so they are publicly recognized. And, and this means that in that phase, they are ranked nationally, while in the first phase, they just know they are top 5% in their school, but not necessarily means anything about the national uh, distribution. Um, and so what is exactly the treatment here? So what I'm calling uh, are publicly recognized, what does this mean uh, in practice, yeah? Ahead. Clarify question. Among those who qualify to take the second phase, how many of them actually do? Is there attrition? There a lot of people don't take it, yeah. Exactly. So there will be, I think, 50% uh, actually show up to take, and, uh, and the rest will not just show up. Yeah. yeah? Does doing well on this exam give you like a better chance of being admitted to a prestigious university or anything like that? Like what? Yeah, the setting of Brazil is such that most of prestigious universities will be, be will be will determine admission based on an exam. So this will not affect a lot uh, college uh, admission. Okay. But it, there could be some private universities that use that. Uh, but yeah, not so. So we much. really should think of this purely as shifting your own self perception. So, but perception. so, but that's primarily the reason of why I look at the peers. Right, okay, right, right. that's exactly, understand. yeah, exactly because there are supply constraints, you know, like if you give this award, this may give you better opportunities to access all sorts of things, like not only college, but like the teacher may look differently to you, you know, many school investments. So because of that, I'm looking at the peers with the hope that this is shutting down most of the supply effects. Yeah. Okay, so the treatment, so what is the exactly the treatment? Uh, so it, it, the student close to the cutoff, uh, they, the ones who win, they get this honorable mention award uh, and it's infor information context. What, what does it mean? That they get a certificate acknowledging the achievement with no monetary prize associated with it. Their name uh, is put in the website of this math uh, competition organizers, okay? Uh, web, in their website. And the winners... They don't have FERPA, do they? <laughs> they don't have what? For uh, uh, the educational privacy law. Yeah. Because you're ordering students by their rank on a test. Exactly. So, but they, they, these are basically the winners. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and be, that's exactly the reason why they don't disclose information for the non-winners, because they feel, you know, for the winners it's fine, and we just put in the website. For the non-winners, they are worried about uh, the consequence for the kids. And, and so basically the top 4%, uh, get the recognition, but they are ranked. So they know that they are the, the last one to make the cut, okay? And then I'm comparing this with the students in the bottom 96% uh, of the distribution who are not informed, not the, the whole student, but basically the one that, uh, that is uh, close to winning, but basically the information that they know is that they are in the top 96% of the distribution, yeah? Did you try to see, well, you didn't show us yet the results, but did you try to see also there is an how intensive is the treatment in medics, the rank medics, for the outcomes of the peers? How so intensive? Right now you're treating as a binary, right? Yeah. So, but then, if I'm ranked first versus in my rank, then... Yeah, it, something that I have to do is on the exploring the type of award, because they can get the certificate, but if they score very high, they can get a, you know, a gold medal, a, some other type of medals. And these I haven't done uh, as much. I should uh, do that. If there is an effect on, differential effect on the peers. Yeah, so that's the setup. So let me be precise on how I think the, the spillovers might be happening here, right? We know that there is this award coming uh, to some students uh, and this award may affect the winner through a supply as you were leading to. There is a certificate effect that could be uh, affecting the opportunities and educational investments on the on the winner. 
There is also what I claim, a demand, uh, 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 an effect on the demand of education through a high performance mindset effect, which I will be a little bit more precise soon. Um, and the idea is that uh, the supply effect is way less pronounced in the peers relative to the recognized individual. And that's primarily uh, what made me uh, start looking at the peers, because basically I was interested more on what happens to the demand for education, uh, and this I can uh, hopefully uh, look at the classmates rather than looking at the uh, recognized individual. Just, now, so, so the high performance mindset, I mean, partly is presumably I have a, if it's my classmate, I know roughly how we, uh, how smart he is relative to me or something. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's, it might be that I, like the part of the mindset might just be information that I didn't, I'm actually better at him than that, I know, and he was top 4%, so if mm -hmm. I work harder, yeah. it's, that, would count, that would count as a high. Yeah, so exactly. So what are the channels that I'm calling within this high performance mindset, okay? Uh, it's basically beliefs, so the award may be shaping beliefs about the ability and goals within reach, so basically, uh, because I don't have as accurate beliefs about how I rank in the national distribution, I'm getting information about that, okay? And that's one of the subjective elements of the demand for education. I have, you know, inaccurate beliefs about uh, the, the returns uh, for my effort. The second channel is, is that the award might be shaping interests. So it, it, because of competitive motives, because of uh, aspirations, I might be changing um, what exactly I aim for, because there is this award winner in my classroom. Uh, and so here I gave two examples, like talking, uh, this is from uh, interactions that I had with students, that says a little bit that this could be going on, but uh, it's not evidence of anything, it's just like some quote. Uh, and then the second sh says, you know, I ask a teacher if there is anything that had changed in the life of the winner, and the teacher says, yes, like two months after the award, the winners start dating this very hardworking classmate of him, suggesting that this may have changed something about what he's aspiring, what he's uh, trying to, uh, his goals in life, even if it's not on the math dimension. Uh, okay, so that's basically uh, the, the, what I'm, you know, I'm not being very super precise mathematically on what is the high performance mindset, but that's the main ideas uh, that I, I'm hoping uh, to get. Um, so the, the next question is, well, all this is operating uh, for the winner or the recognized individual, so why exactly this is uh, affecting the, the, the classmates? So what I will claim is that the classroom setting facilitates the social comparison. How exactly? So first the winner certificate is sent to the school, uh, and the school staff enter in classrooms to announce this winner. Second, at the time of the award, the winner, uh, the, the time of the, the award uh, winner is announced, uh, all 30 classmates have remained together in all subjects for the entire school year. So this basically means that this facilitates positioning themselves relative to the winner, right? So they can know, if I know you and you won an award, I know how far I am from you. So then it is allows me to update. If it's someone else that I have no clue of his ability, then it's hard to make anything out uh, about me. The second element is that it may shape you know, the extent of social ties and these things that may uh, matter for shaping the interest and competition motives and, and so on. So because of these two factors, I, I believe that this classroom uh, setting facilitates uh, this demand uh, fact kicking in, okay? So there could be also a, a more somehow mechanical effect, like mm -hmm. this winner now is uh, feeling like uh, super proud and is going to better, a better school because uh, he increased his own uh, um, idea and what he aspiration, what he wants to do. Yeah. And uh, my best friend now is going to this a very good school, let me apply uh, to that school or let me try. Uh, to get into. So it could be a, like a more mechanical effect that the, the, the winner That the behavior of the winner exactly. changing. It's changing like how I wanted to look more similar to, or like I just wanted to take uh, similar educational choices uh, uh, to my best friend that is in my class, and therefore uh, this effect. So it could be another uh, way. And maybe you can see that if you can track them over time and see yeah. where they apply or where they enter, you can. 
Yeah, I actually I see that they are more likely to stay in that school. Like both of them, uh, the classmates and the peers, the, sorry, the classmates and the recognized individual, they are more likely to stay in the school uh, as, a, as a result of the award. Uh, but I should uh, think how to like how to fit this. Um, I think I can still think about the same framework of the. In but I have yeah, I have to think more. I, I had thought about that and then I forgot about this <laughs> issue of the, the recognizing the individual changing his behavior. Yeah, Is go. There a lot of, uh, so, it's still puzzled by fifty percent of them not taking, uh -huh. uh, even though they qualify. Is you know? Do you observe those? Do you know if there's are there cluster? in some schools and not others. Is it, I wonder if that's kind of like a proxy for different types of social norms, right? Some schools where, mm -hmm. where it's like, if if in, in some schools, all the kids who qualify are not taking it, that's yeah. a sign that pro probably it's a school where- it's, I think it's, so, it's, two, two it's things. It's not cool to be a nerd. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so two, two answers, yeah, so two answers. So the first is that I'm actually more surprised about the opposite, that these people actually go there and take the exam because only 33,000 will be recognized and then many of them are actually showing up, like 500,000 kids are showing up and, and this, they, they qualify just because they qualify within their school, right? But like it might be a terrible school and that's why they're qualifying. Second, so that's one thing. And, and the second is that the, uh, I'm actually so, but if you see uh, the data, like what exactly, who are the kids who are not showing up? Basically you see that there is huge variation. Some kids got the award and got a similar score with these kids that did not show up. So I'm doing an experiment there to understand exactly that now, but this is a follow-up project. Yeah. It could be like in, uh -huh. if there's a school where most kids who qualify did not show up, and you say that this is probably a school where the, it's not cool to be a nerd. You can see if there's heterogeneity for, I okay, see. for the, the kid who actually showed up and won. Mm -hmm. Maybe you actually might have negative spillovers in those schools because you know you have something that can predict whether the mm -hmm. type of existing norm in those schools. I don't know if that type of yeah variation. No, I did a little bit of that in terms of the just the school quality, just whether the school and I didn't find much there. Uh, but I think it's like it could be. It's actually a more, yeah, it's a better measure of the norm, the prevailing norm about how cool is it to participate yeah, in that. Yeah, in the school, 90% of the kids who yeah. could didn't show up and that one kid mm -hmm. showed up in one. Yeah, Maybe yeah. that's a school where the spillovers are going to be negative, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know, as yeah. opposed to a school where all the kids who are eligible actually showed up. Yeah. Yeah, that's Yes, good. Yeah. so you could have this heterogeneity of, yeah. of, of the effects. It would be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, okay. <coughs> So data and empirical strategies. So just uh, to give a, a overview of the timeline here, uh, I recover classroom assignments from the school year prior to the, that the award is given. The award is given at the end of the school year uh, in Brazil, which is around December. And then I'm exploring like outcomes after uh, the, the school year, uh, you know, in the next uh, school uh, year. Uh, so I'm using the 2009-2012 Math Olympiad classroom and, and classroom assignment. So I get the scores of all the students, and not only the award winners, uh, right? Uh, and I'm matching, I'm merging this with the information about the classroom uh, in the, re the regular school throughout uh, Brazil. Uh, and I, I will be looking at outcomes that uh, refer to the individual, the part that I'm calling the recognized individual or you know, the accomplished individual that I'm calling participant. Uh, and this individual, uh, they, I am observing his performance in the math Olympiad as well as the performance of the classmate. Uh, and these I have information from sixth grade up to 11th grade, which is, will be my main outcome. I also complement these with information that I only have for the 11th grade, which is like enrollment in selective colleges, uh, participation and score in the Brazilian SAT, low stakes standardized test score, grade attainment and dropout, which is uh, not for uh, all the grades. And I, I have additional covariates and other uh, outcomes. Okay, so just to be uh, clear on what is the empirical strategy, so the idea is that I have two classrooms, right? So in the first classroom, I have a, a participant who barely uh, you know, made it. Uh, and and I have, I observe, I will be comparing the participant in these two classrooms. That will be one set of regressions that I'm presenting. 
The second, I'm actually looking at the classmates. And the classmates, I'm basically comparing this, the classmates of the, the individual who won the award and the classmates of the individual who lost uh, the award, okay? Um, so I'm using a, a flexible linear regression using closed elections. Uh, I'm exploring a, whether there is an award winner uh, in the classroom. So I'm interested in this beta uh, coefficient. Um, and, and, I'm, uh, and my running variable is the score of the highest score uh, student in that classroom, yeah? Do you ever observe classrooms where there are students on both sides of that narrow threshold? Yeah. In order to define the treatment, I look at the highest score student to define the treatment. And this basically makes sure that in a given classroom, it's the, that classroom is either control or treatment. Well, so what I wonder actually yeah. is you, you could use the classrooms where you observe students on both ends of the cutoff as mm -hmm. basically, you know, cases where the classmates can more precisely update about their own national rank because they're now bounded from both above and below. Yeah. As opposed to cases where you only receive information above the threshold. And so yeah. you, it's harder to place yourself. Mm -hmm. Right, so looking at that heterogeneity might be really interesting. Yes, I think that that's right. Like this is would be like fourteen percent of the sample. Yeah, so I could, uh, I could, I think like so far I'm just trying to see the basically there is an effect with this one award mm -hmm. or not, and then I think I, there is way more to be done here. That is. Uh, getting at that uh, heterogeneity. Um, okay, so basically, let me just... Uh, but maybe these will be the two best students, the one that win and the second one will be the two best in the classroom, and all the other are below, so they just know that these are like around the first five per percent, and they are but below the five. But that would be more discouraging then, yeah. right? Because you realize, you know, I'm so far even from this person who was barely, just barely failed. I yeah, I, I mean, think there there's can, some, you can put some bounds on the, the information. But, but they don't know that you barely failed. Sorry? Do, do I know that somebody's barely failed? No, but she's saying if you uh, made it, right? You're saying if you don't make it? Or I thought you were saying if there are two people who win the award, then you can actually, yeah, if you don't a, make it, you don't. Yeah, so I'd forgotten that, that there's no information if yeah. someone doesn't make it. Um, but for, I mean, I, I imagine that it's, in, in many cases, common knowledge whether a student takes the exam or not. No, but it's still you don't know if you're close, right? Right, but yeah. but you know that you know. Let's say I take the exam and I don't win. Yeah. And you are also in my class, and you take it and you win, and we know exactly how well you did. Mm -hmm. um, then Leo can then look at that, and if he knows that he's somewhere between me and you, he's much closer than if he's somewhere below where I am. Anyway, I don't want to take yeah. up yeah the yeah yeah yeah. Presentation yeah. Time. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, then, I, uh, so basically I will have, there are the controls that I can add or not to the results. I cluster standard errors at the classroom level because that's the level of the treatment. And using uh, optimal bandwidth, I end up with a sample of 5 million, uh, around 5 million students from 6th to 11th grade in 170,000 uh, classrooms, okay? So that's basically to give a sense on where these classrooms are uh, in Brazil. So they are coming from all over uh, the country. Some municipalities are contributing with more classrooms than, uh, and more schools than, than others. Uh, but what we see, I just wanted to emphasize that these are not necessarily just the top schools. So 10% uh, so of my RD sample are actually coming from uh, schools that are in the bottom quartile of the school uh, in terms of the quality of the school. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, identification assumptions or potential outcomes are continuous around the cutoff uh, and so on. Uh, I do a standard empirical tests. Perhaps the, the most uh, useful is just to test for smoothness in uh, baseline outcomes, uh, and that's basically the test for baseline and some, uh, I think, important covariates about the quality of the school uh, and so on. 
Uh, the results, so I will present the impact of the award on the classmates educational investment, then I will benchmark with the impact on, on the uh, participant himself. Okay, so that's the first uh, result, uh, which I present the, you know, the one that I think connects the best with education, with a measure of educational investment, which is whether the student is more likely to enroll in selective colleges in Brazil as a result of the award. So this is basically what happens to a classmate uh, of this rec recognized individual, right? So in the y-axis is basically this uh, probability of enrolling in selective college, and the x-axis is my running variable, which is the score margin of the participant of the method period. So what we see is that there is an increase in about 11% uh, in the likelihood that these kids uh, enroll uh, in selective colleges. And so that's, the, the, I think, the most striking uh, result uh, of the paper. Then now I will try to say why is this exactly happening? Like what are the margins that are actually being affected to lead uh, to this? So does this uh, impact classmates' effort? So here I test whether uh, the students are more likely to participate in the math Olympiad in the subsequent year. So just clarify. Yeah. So are you pulling students for all the, from all these grades in that previous yeah. regression? Mm -hmm. I see. What happens when, you, if you restrict to, say, those were the last two years in high school, do you see a big effect? So not, there is not a lot of variation now here on, because you, you are, why exactly we're expecting? Trying to understand if it's something like, yeah. if I'm in sixth grade, I mean, enrolling in a selective college is something Ah, no, down. sorry, not pulling, sorry, my bad. So here I'm just looking at the ones immediately before the, taking college, right? right. So that's a very sense. short yeah. run effect. So okay. I win that. this award in 11th grade, then the next year, okay. basically I'm going was, to college. Okay. Okay. Sorry, what so I'm pulling is... For 6th grade it will be... It will be yeah. yeah. <laughs> so because that, that information oh. just... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Not, so this is just the 11th grade result, okay? Um, I'm, I'm just really surprised that your t-stat is what it is given. You would think that a test that just zoomed in on the closer, like with the yeah. sample size, you should be able to reject that they're the same much more convincingly than... Am I missing something? It's, um, in what, so basically, that depends on the likelihood of this event, right? On the how likely is that they go to college. I see. So they go to college in Brazil, we in a very rare, it's a rare, oh, very see. rare event. So I that's uh, basically, especially selective college. So I think any college will be 15%. Uh, I think I have this number here. Uh, participant, I think is here. Uh, so it will be 2%, uh, 3%, uh, sorry, not here, uh, classmates by select. DVT, I think that's, uh, yeah, any college will be like 5%. So the effective sample size is smaller. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, it depends on the, how frequent is the, the variable, yeah. But basically it will be either zero or one to everyone, yeah. Uh -huh. so, and do you know exactly to which college and whether yeah. they are going exactly on the same college of the award week? Go back on my yeah, I think there's all this. The, yes, so exactly. If you, if you can see that, you mm -hmm. can somehow rule out or like support this channel. Uh, this channel of what? Of okay. like going where my friend is going. So now the award oh, winner is going to a best uh, a better school, and I'm just yeah. going where my friend is going. So, one, one story is about learning, right? I'm learning about my type and my. I uh -huh. aspire to go to a better college. Yeah. Other one's more of a social utility channel, which is. There's joint consumption from going to the same college as my friend. Mm -hmm. So if it's learning, it should just hold, I think, for different tiers of college, not necessarily the same one. Mm -hmm. But if the effect's all driven by going to the same college, it's, it's more consistent with social utility. Yeah, is I that, think this is something that, that I, I, haven't, I haven't separated yet, but this could be done, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so so the world, they would be the same college, right? Because there's very strong yeah. within state. Yeah. So, so yeah, in Australia okay. would all be within the yeah. same. So regardless of this college result, what I'm saying is that even in the school, I find evidence that is consistent with what, what you're saying. So the award is affecting the likelihood that you stay in that same school for the winner and for the uh, of the recognized for the winner and the classmate. So there is some support for your channel 
uh, I just uh, that could be happening here as well. But I have to, I can separate a little bit more with the college. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm probably missing something. Yeah. So this is the effect of having a winner in the classroom on the average student in the classroom. Yeah. So how selective are these selective colleges that you can have? Like, I mean, this strikes me as a really large effect, right? So there's like a super top brilliant student mm -hmm. in the classroom, and I'm guessing yeah. most people aren't so super brilliant. So why would they even get into a selective? So, so, so I guess this, this goes back to, to a house. You know, so exactly. What's, what's the variation, what's the ability of variation within classrooms? How, how, how attractive are these classrooms? Um, right. Yeah, I, there, is a, there is track in Brazil, but that's uh, by law is prohibited. But like there is, you know, as a matter of fact, there is tracking. Uh, but like this is, you know, it's 11%, but this doesn't, you know, the actual magnitude is not very large. So it could be affecting just a few students in that classroom, right? Uh, so, plus, it's a, right, thirty. It's not a big number of students you're affecting here. Yeah. It's thirty. Well, yeah. there's thirty students, but you're getting a rate of point. Yeah, you know, you're increasing from point oh two to point oh three. Yeah, so it's point thirty one. Yeah, yeah, percentage point. So yeah, the magnitude is actually small. Yeah. yeah. I got the scale wrong. Bad question. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, Great. Okay. So that's so. Then the question is like, what uh, what other margins are are being affected, right? And how this leading to a college uh, increase? So first, I showed that there is a likely increasing likelihood of uh, of of um, of participating in the math Olympiad in increase by five percent. Uh, it also uh, I, I you know I basically do this for these different bandwidths and uh, and um, I'm just you know I, what I find is like a very tiny effect again similar to college very tiny effect of 0.13 percentage points uh, but this is just coming out of a very low base so this is like it generates a five percent increase and then later I'm exactly trying to understand whether it is affecting all the students in the classroom or certain type of students does it, it impact test achievement? So then I show what happens to uh, test uh, the performance in the math Olympiad itself. Of course, this is a selective, uh, uh, you know, a selection contaminated uh, sample of students. But even then, uh, we find that there is an increase in, uh, in the performance of the students. I also do some bounding uh, exercise in order to recover what is the actual impact if we, we would assume that the students that are showing up is actually the, the worst students. Uh, and then I find that this bound is actually very tight around the, the number that I presented uh, before. Uh, and then, you know, because of these bounds, uh, I'm doing a lot of the analysis with just the zero one, like whether they pass a certain threshold, like no matter uh, whether you participated or not, you are getting a score that is zero one in the math Olympiad, okay? Which is one if you pass a certain cutoff of the percentile distribution to measure like basically uh, the performance, whether there is an increase in performance uh, in the math Olympiad. Is it clear? So basically uh, the test uh, score is contaminated uh, because of you know some kids are worse and they are showing up and I have to somehow uh, take into account that fact. So then the way, uh, but you know if there are other ways to do that, I would be happy to to incorporate. What I do is to test for uh, whether the students uh, pass a cutoff, and then I do this for any possible cutoff. You know I'm I'm, pre I'm showing here the fifth, but in the paper I'm present with. All the you know passing this the the sixth the eightieth the seventh and, and and so on and I'm presenting the results basically to clean this selection uh, issue. Uh, so then I I do some robustness uh, and uh, to show how much this is varying uh, with uh, the bandwidth, excluding certain uh, years, only some states and and so on. Uh, Randomized inference as well, uh, permutation uh, and so on. Uh, then, so so far, what I find is that there is increasing effort. This increase also test achievement. Uh, it has potential long-run consequences if the student is 
making a huge decision in the short run, such as going to college. And it's unclear how much, you know, how different is this pattern with respect to the recognized individual. Uh, so I check two, two elements. So the first is the magnitude, how big is the effect. The second is the persistence of the effect. Um, so what I find is that, so the first, the A is uh, showing the result of the participant, which is the new set of results. The second is basically presenting the result for the classmate that I had discussed already. Uh, basically, what I find is that the impact on the participant is much larger than the impact on the classmate. So it increases uh, performance uh, in, in the mm -hmm. methylene period by about 33%, while the classmate increased by about 8%. Uh, yeah. Diana, sorry, I mm -hmm. might have missed some institutional differences. Yes. Here, but so you can see these kids as taking the exam every single year in principle or in the <coughs> life period, yes. <coughs> so you know people who took it already for two, three years, for example, right? Yeah. So if you see an improvement for a classmate of that nature, it's probably effort just because they already knew about uh, the fact that they, you know, could or could not succeed. I'm trying to see whether uh, you can exploit the fact that somebody already took it before yeah. you really revealed this thing. Uh, but as a matter of like the priors of these individuals or like you're saying? There should be a difference from someone who takes it for the first time after you announce and someone who had already taken it, then takes it after you announce, but maybe puts more effort in preparing. You mm. see what I'm trying to say? Because but for I'm, those people oh, who took it multiple times, yeah. you can see whether they do better as a mm -hmm. proxy for the fact they might have studied harder, while yeah. for the other people, maybe it's just that they try to. They try to do it, I yeah. I don't know yeah. if there's anything to look into. I see, I think, it, yeah, yeah, I should uh, look at the, the distribution, you mean, right? So the people who never took it, they might be very good, and it's just that they go there and they take it, while the others that are always trying, it's just that they are putting more effort and that's why they, yeah. something, right? They, that's the two stories that you're saying. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's uh, something I could take a look at. Um, so never take this. So when they okay. win, do they take, are there a lot of people who win and take again? Yes, yeah. Um, because they can get the gold, they can get something else, right? Um, Okay, so, uh, and in fact, so that's what is shown. So the fact that you won, yes, exactly. you are participating, you are more likely yes, to participate, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. Do students have to travel to take the second stage? Yeah, so not, so there are some centers uh, for some students, yeah, but most will be in their town and they have to travel, you know, distance, but not. Could you check yeah. for, for sort of these effects of being more likely to take it after someone who's won based on how far the school That's is interesting, yeah. from the center, right? On the theory that, say, I win this year, next year I'm now definitely going to participate because now I know I have a shot and I carpool or I you know, yeah. help my friend get there because I'm going anyway. Yeah, just saw another measure of demand for that. That's what you're saying, right? Like, basically, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, okay. So then, so that's basically the, how does the, the result compare in terms of the participant versus classmates. The uh, persistence of the effect, so what I find is that, you know, after one year, uh, that's the, the impact for the participant and that's the impact for classmates. For one year, the, the, the impact, for a second, sorry, for after two years, the impact for the participant is still there. For, so 78% of the impact is still there. For the classmates, the impact is gone. So basically, there is an impact that lasts for one year, and then the second year, there is not much going on anymore. Okay, so if they were going to take the college, uh, you know, selectivity process two years after, there could be no consequence for his life. Um, so overall, I find that the, the impact on the classmates is smaller in terms of magnitude, less persistent. But it's still quite, uh, you know, quite relevant if you think about the spillovers that might be affecting these 30 students. It's about 50% if you make you know, a calculation of like the different impacts for the student, for the participant, and the classmates. We find that these spillovers represent about 50%. 
The difference in terms of the magnitude and persistence suggests that the mechanism that explains the spillovers are a subset of the mechanism that explains uh, the impact on the participant, yeah? I see the gender I've got to ask. The gender, yeah. So these are a bunch of things that basically I was hoping to find the facts that I thought that could be something there, and I don't find much. That's so basically... That's uh, very interesting. I mean, Nicole for 10 has a bunch of papers which basically show men yeah. have this sort of overconfidence in mathematics, mm -hmm. mathematical ability, yeah. and women don't. They would, I'm kind of surprised. You, you, so you I seem find, to speak to that. Yeah, yeah. so I, I find an effect. For the participant himself, there is a differential effect which I think I will show soon. Uh, but for the classmates, there is no. Like, you know, if someone is a winner and is female, what happens to other female in the classroom? There is not much. But again, the problem is that I'm cutting too much. And then I'm, it's unclear whether it's a power or whether, you know, there is no effect. I think this paper can speak to the main effect. So there is an impact. Uh, and even the mechanism is much weaker here. And that's why, because basically I'm cutting a lot the, the sample when I'm doing heterogeneity and so on. Um, but yeah, so basically that's the, uh, yeah. So then what hap why exactly there is uh, these spillovers uh, to classmates? Then, uh, you know, in many models uh, that think about the spillovers operating through the demand, the spillovers hinge on, on a measure of proximity between the accomplished individual and the peer. For example, if we think about the role model, the success of a student results in greater change in perceptions about uh, their returns uh, to putting effort. Uh, and this depends on, on three elements, uh, at least in this model. So basically, physical proximity uh, that allows him to observe like the individual, the successful individual ability and effort depends on similarity in terms of ability. Uh, uh, and third, proximity uh, socially, like either the same gender or a family tie or something that makes them uh, respond uh, more, update more about his own capabilities of uh, mating, making, uh, of passing the cutoff, right? So uh, what I will show is that the classmates' response is generally uh, consistent with these patterns, uh, not all of them. But basically, uh, I will argue that this is consistent with, with either changing perception, as I was uh, leading to in the role model, or changing interest. I cannot really separate these two. It could be just changing in desirability of winning this award. And I denominate this combination of the two a changing the high in a high performance mindset, either operating through beliefs or operating through uh, uh, preference. So the two uh, main evidence that I will find uh, supportive of this theory is uh, looking at first how does this educational investment response. Uh, matter with physical proximity. The second is uh, ma uh, how does it vary with uh, in terms of ability, with variation in ability. Um, okay, so I have 16. Um, then, so what I find here is that the impact that I document for the participant and the classmates is not there for the grade mates. So if we look throughout the school in that same grade, I don't find an impact on, uh, on the grade mates. And so this suggesting that you know, physical proximity seem uh, to matter. Of course, there are other confounders here, uh, precisely the tracking, for example. Um, then I also show that this effect uh, on the, there's no effect on the grade mates is not coming only from the fact that the individual does not know about the award. So what I show here is on this uh, figure, on this part of the figure, I'm showing the impact on the likelihood that these individuals transfer schools, okay? As a measure uh, of trying to understand how much they know about the award being given. So is it the case that the award impacts some other outcome of the grade mates that is not associated with performance? So what I find is that these grade mates are more likely, like the classmates and like the participant, to stay in that school because the award happened. However, they are not more likely to perform better, yeah? So yeah. do you know who are the teachers of these kids or not? And can you separate grade mates who have the same teacher mm -hmm. as you or not? Because I think that would tell you whether it's the teacher who now you yeah. know, makes an effort or solicits the I students or they learn from each other. Yeah, so I do, I think it's, uh, yeah, so basically, is it 
this here. Where is it? Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, no, I, I'm not, I, I should have a, like a hyperlink here, but basically what I find before going there, okay, I try to see whether the award affect the likelihood that you stay in the same classroom as a way to see whether, you know, the award is impacting the physical proximity element that I'm claiming that is explaining uh, the, the mechanism. So what I find is that the award is impacting the likelihood that the classmates continue with the winner which makes it complicated to explore the variation you are asking for, which is like whether the individual has the same teacher or not. Because if the, the award is impacting the likelihood that we stay together, uh, basically they're saying that they are uh, observed, they are having the same teacher, but this is endogenous. No, but I'm thinking yeah. the same teacher also teaching in another class. I know, another okay. totally different So class. this teacher could say, you know, you guys can make it because uh, Diana in this section 2C yeah. uh, did it. And uh, that would be during the same year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's absolutely, yeah, yeah. This is something that has to be, yeah. The MO performance is? The? the MO performance. Math and period, sorry. It's always the same outcome here. And here I'm just conditioning on their past performance and see whether... Uh, yeah, this is just a separate that I will get to. Like uh, what I wanted to emphasize is just the first column here that shows that basically this, the award is impacting the likelihood that they stay physically uh, close in, in future year, uh, suggesting that this is potentially one mechanism that is operating. And then uh, second is the similarity in terms of ability. What I find is like if I put all the outcomes together, the impact seems more pronounced in variables that are more relevant to the top of the distribution. So again, I don't find any impact on dropout, on grade attainment, even standardized test score, and the impact is concentrated on Brazilian SAT, selective college, uh, the math Olympiad itself that is more relevant uh, to the top of the distribution. Uh, uh, then I do some heterogeneity to see who uh, exactly is responding to that, looking at past test score. This is something that I have to do better than what I'm doing. So, so far I'm just using the summary measure, like putting together all these guys and trying to see whether the, the effect is uh, higher for students in the top quartile of the distribution. I have to do, uh, like just using the Brazilian SAT and trying to, to say something that is less black box than the summary measure. Um, and so what I find is that basically the top quartile uh, seem to be the students that are responding the most. So they are responding on the margins that are more relevant to the top, and they are also students that are originally in the top quartile of the distribution. It, it would be interesting to run that with also the bottom quartile just to see if maybe there's a negative effect for people who so yeah, so oh. the, that's the exact, so at just the bottom, I see. Okay. Yeah, so the above the median, that's picking up the, the ones in the bottom, effect. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but, but the, it could be just the bottom, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because the, the, the award becomes negative when you put in just the exactly, top quartile, yeah. so there's some hope that you might get a negative effect yeah. from the bottom of the class. Isn't that the third column? Does it show that yep. a little bit? Yep, a little yeah. bit. Exactly, yeah. so yeah, yeah, it's saying for the below median, right? Yeah. yeah, I think he's asking for even more than, yeah. Uh, okay, so then I have shown that, you know, proximity seems to matter, which I interpret as evidence consistent with this observability of the winner's effort ability mattering uh, for the comparison, for the social comparison. The uh, being top in the ability distribution also seems to matter. And however, if I know differential impact by social proximity in terms of gender, in terms of race uh, and, and things like that. Uh, so the alternative channels are basically just supply, uh, which, uh, you know, what happens? Is it the case that this student, you know, more inputs are being channeled to the winners, uh, and then this is spilled over to the classmates or not? Then I, I test, uh, you know, I provide several tests on this idea. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but then, then ask the question about, so you said that there's, there's no evidence of differential spillovers depending on gender, but there's, evidence of differential effect for, for their own person. Mm -hmm. Do you have those results to show? That's I think it's super interesting. Mm -hmm. Or just a variance, even a variance yeah, scores within yeah. the classroom? Yeah, uh, there is, I think, same gender. Let's see here. 
Oh, it's such a mess, these hyperlinks. That's the, let's see, it's same gender as participant. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think there will be just way too many. It's fine, we can. Yeah, yeah I that. think just... here, uh, transfer to school. No. Yeah, but so basically, uh, there is an effect that is differential for uh, men actually respond more. So when men win an award, they respond more than women, actually. It's the opposite of what some other literature have found uh, in the Netherlands setting. Uh, and the way I think is that this is talking about the returns to effort, right? So when the returns to effort for men is much higher uh, in the society, and then these guys are responding more because of that. But yeah, um, that's basically what I find. There is no differential for the you know, this interaction with who is the winner and then the gender of the others. Yeah. Okay. The, so the supply. So I find a, a bunch of like you know uh, you know no consequence for the percent you know the quality dimensions of the quality of teachers number of teachers that are assigned to these classrooms, uh, the age, the experience of this teacher doesn't seem to be affected uh, by the award. Uh, I also present a bunch of indirect evidence, you know, of teacher sorting. So other classrooms in the same grade don't seem to be uh, doing worse. Uh, teachers might be shifting instructional level from the bottom. I do, uh, do not find evidence on dropout and things that are matter for the bottom. Uh, overall increase in teachers' effort. Uh, also, what I find is that students that no, that in the future classroom, they are no longer in the same classroom. What I find is that they don't, which I think is what Eliana was sort of asking, then I figured out that it was something different. But what I was hoping to say is that in the, when the winners continue in the same classroom, the impact is larger. But the impact is still there if they, con they do not continue in the same classroom. So they don't have to be in the same classroom in the future year to, uh, to the, for the effect to kick in. Um, OK, so that's way. OK, so then I test for peer quality likewise. So is it the case that now this award comes in? Is it that they are tracking, they do more tracking and more these sort of things that put better people together. So I don't find evidence uh, for that. I test in a variety of, of ways. Uh, and just uh, to conclude here, so what I find is that when recognition is given to accomplished student, there are consequences for the educational investment of that student, but also of the classmates. And in particular, incre increases in classmates investments for the ones that are close uh, in term physically and in terms of ability of the accomplished uh, individual. So taken together, the recognition of a high performing student increased the peers' uh, educational investment by promoting this, what I'm calling this high performance mindset among physically close uh, high achievers. Uh, contribution to the literature, I think, as I was saying, so. There are a few papers that are trying to get at these subjective factors driving the low demand for education. I'm contributing to a growing literature that is trying to study uh, you know, how common experiences in the student's life actually affect this low demand in the first place, uh, contribute to the low demand in the first place. In particular, Leo's paper with Jensen and Sequeira is very close to mine. So on the first, uh, the way I see the difference, so correct me if I'm wrong here, <laughs> I would love to hear. So basically the way I see is that the recognition of the accomplishment there in that case is based on a local rank. And there he finds that this may backfire and discourage educational investment. Uh, Sequeira studies the recognition based on a global rank, which may be revealing of the returns to education, allow the student to map themselves into the distribution of returns to education. And that's even closer to mine. So let me talk a little bit more about the paper. So uh, in their study, they use a very similar setting as mine. So it's a math award based on, on a global rank that affect the beliefs, that could be affecting the beliefs of the returns to secondary education. Uh, and they study uh, the effect on these beliefs, exactly. And so what if they find is that the award increases the winner's belief, but does not increase the beliefs of the peers of the winner, okay? So my main contribution here is twofold. So the first 
is that I'm finding an effect that the award increased educational investments for these classmates, for these peers, okay? Um, and so this is uh, why they, they didn't find any effect on the peers. And I find suggestive evidence of why that could be the case, why they couldn't, they were not finding an effect uh, on the peers, why I'm, I'm finding an effect in, in terms of uh, educational investment. And I show that the peers must be in the vicinity of the winner, physically close and actually, uh, and in terms of ability to actually experience this increase in educational investment. Uh, and this is suggestive that, you know, even with the, the students could be uh, investing more in education, but not update the, their beliefs about the returns to education. What they're updating is like where they lie in that distributional uh, of re educational returns. And so what, what uh, you know, if you ask the students, these different students, what is exactly the returns that they think that is the returns to secondary education, they may likely say the same. It's just that now they think that that uh, education achievement is something attainable to them. And so it's, uh, it's still consistent with the no effect on, on, the, on the beliefs. And that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, thank you. Any uh -huh. questions? Questions? Yeah. I wish I, there's a, a true story that I wish I remember the names to go with, but someone had a, some famous economist Mm -hmm. who's going to be a mathematician, but had a freshman roommate who was very good at math, and he said, well, this is what a mathematician is, so he decided to be an economist, and the freshman roommate later became like a Fields Medalist. And, a, <laughs> and, and, the, and so I wonder if there's some, uh, this is on the sort of negative treatment, it could be that yeah. having a very high achieving peer could be discouraging, uh, because if I'm only the second best, I thought I really liked math, I was only the best, second best math student mm -hmm. in my class, but now I learned that the, fir that the first best math student is, is a star. It, especially if he's ranked really, so you could look at mm -hmm. the ranks within, suppose you discover that the first best is uh, is actually turns out to be sort of top one per half percent in the country. Mm -hmm. Then that actually could encourage the second best because he thought I was only second best in my little town, but now he realizes that you know that actually isn't. So I wonder if you could distinguish between removing discouragement versus versus the positive effect you were just like just saying you know in some places that are very bad to begin with, they would. Uh, Ne never imagine that you know they are second exactly. in a huge uh, distribution. It usually would be second yeah. bad news to be second best in my village, but occasionally, mm -hmm. if my village happens to have the smartest guy in the world, it's actually not bad news. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mm -hmm. think that's uh, which along the lines of the norms, right? What is it exactly that they are? Uh, uh, I think this is yeah something that I can I can do. <laughs>